I just got this model of Traveler's Tower from ReplicaBuildings.com, one of the great landmarks of Hartford, Connecticut. The 24-story, 527-foot tower was completed in 1919. The tower was actually built as one section of the larger Traveler's Insurance Company headquarters building. It was erected as an extension of the original building, in the third of four major building phases that took place between 1906 and 1927. This two decades long construction of travelers replaced a number of interesting earlier buildings that had stood here in the late 19th century. In this video, I'm going to talk about these lost buildings, including ones that were torn down in the 1960s to make way for the plaza just south of the tower. I'll also mention Traveler's earlier headquarters on Prospect Street and the four major stages by which the Traveler's Tower complex we know today came into being. Here is a map of Hartford. The Traveler's HQ is located between Main Street on the west and Prospect Street on the east. It was bounded by Grove Street to the north, but that block of Grove ceased to exist when Travelers built a connected extension to the north in the mid-20th century. By the way, just to the east, the next block of the former Grove Street is now called Bob Steele Street. South of Travelers is a plaza, and across a street called Athenaeum Square is the Wadsworth Athenaeum Museum of Art. Here's an old stereograph view of the Athenaeum back in the 1860s, a half century before work started on the Travelers Building. Zooming in on the area just north of Athenaeum Square, where the Traveler's Plaza is today, there is an old house with a rooftop cupola. Here's another view that shows the front facade of this grand home, called the Tusi House. The house was built in the first decade of the 19th century by Chauncey Gleason, a dry goods merchant. It was later owned by Cyprian Nichols, whose daughter Catherine married a man named Isaac Tusi. He was a Democratic politician who held a series of very prominent positions. He was governor of Connecticut from 1846 to 1847, then served as U.S. Attorney General under President James K. Polk from 1848 to 1849. He was then a U.S. Senator from 1852 to 1857 and served another president, James Buchanan, as Secretary of the Navy from 1857 to 1861. Next to the Tusi House is a smaller commercial structure called the Phillips Building. It housed various businesses over the years, but was originally built in 1796 for the publishing firm of Hudson and Goodwin, who had published Noah Webster's famous American Spelling Book, later known as the Blueback Speller. They also published the Hartford Current newspaper from 1796 to 1815. In 1796, the year they moved into this building, they published another notable book, American Cookery by Amelia Simmons, which is considered to be the first American cookbook. The Tusi House and the Phillips Building were replaced by the ornate headquarters building of the Charter Oak Life Insurance Company, designed by Bryant and Rogers and built in 1869 to 1870. The building was eventually taken over by the Aetna Life Insurance Company in 1888. This ornate building had architectural similarities to the Connecticut Mutual Life Insurance Company building built at the same time at the corner of Main and Pearl Streets. Here's another stereo view. Just north of the Charter Oak building stood two other structures. On the left is the Conklin House, which I think was designed by Henry Austin of New Haven. 
Next to that was the headquarters of the Aetna Insurance Company. This was the Aetna Fire Insurance Company, an older company than the Aetna Life Insurance Company, which, as I said, would move in next door in 1888. The Aetna Insurance Building was erected in 1867 and features an Italianate-style design with different types of windows on each floor and a French Second Empire-style mansard roof. The Conklin and the old Aetna building were later replaced by a new Aetna insurance building, erected between 1903 and 1905 and designed by Benjamin Wistar Morris. Its Beaux-Arts and neoclassical style contrasts with the older building just to its south. Both of these buildings would be demolished in the early 1960s to make way for the plaza next to Traveler's Tower. The next building north of Etna was the Universalist Church of the Redeemer. Built in 1860, it was designed by Edward Beale. The church was built on the site of the Black Horse Tavern, which was famous in colonial times. The church had a long yard in front of it, and in 1899, the congregation erected a Renaissance Revival-style building in that area to earn income from renting out the commercial spaces. On the first floor were storefronts on either side of a central passage that led to the church behind the building. Here is a section from the 1877 Bird's Eye View of Hartford. It shows the church set back from Main Street. Some of the buildings we've just been discussing are to the left of the church. To the right is the rest of the block of Main Street south of Grove Street, which in 1877 consisted of two houses. This is a section of a stereograph of the view up Main Street from the Charter Oak Building. It shows the church steeple and the roofs of the two houses to the north. This picture is a view looking north up Main Street in 1880. It shows the 1867 Etna Building and the Conklin House, which as I mentioned would later be replaced by Benjamin Wistar Morris's Etna Building. Next south is the yard of the Congregational Church, later to be filled in with their Renaissance Revival commercial building. South of this is the Clark House. It was built in 1806 by the father of Thomas H. Gallaudet, the famous educator of the deaf. The house was acquired by Ezra Clark in 1829. The building at the corner of Main and Grove was erected as a house in 1848 by the successful liquor dealer Asa Farwell, considered one of the finest private residences in the city at that time. It was designed by Henry Austin of New Haven, and the bricks were brought all the way from Philadelphia by water. After Farwell's death, the house became an office building and was known as the Putnam Building because it was occupied for a time by the Putnam Fire Insurance Company. The picture on the left shows the area 25 years later in 1905, just before work began on the Travelers Building. The Putnam Building is still there. The Clark House has been replaced by the Hartford City Gas Company Building, built in 1894. Another Renaissance Revival structure it was designed by George Keller, architect of Hartford's Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Arch. Next to that is the Universalist Church's commercial building, which I mentioned was built in 1899. The church steeple is visible to the rear. These are the three buildings that would be replaced by the west facade of Travelers. This postcard shows the entire block with the buildings that would make way for travelers at the start of the 20th century and the two buildings that would later be torn down to make way for the plaza south of travelers. Travelers Insurance Company 
was founded in 1864 by James G. Batterson. Before moving to Main Street, the company had its headquarters at the corner of Prospect and Grove Streets. This was an old house that was originally the home of the prominent Hartford citizen Henry L. Ellsworth, brother of Oliver Ellsworth. Travelers occupied the house in 1872 and would make many alterations over the years until the residence had evolved into a massive complex. When travelers moved out, the building was sold to the Hartford Steam Boiler Inspection and Insurance Company, which would later build its own Art Deco-style building on the site. The new Travelers Building would be erected in four phases. Phase 1, in 1906 to 1907, would replace the Putnam and the Hartford City Gas Company buildings. This was little more than half of the structure that the company planned to eventually build. In 1907, it was expected that it would take many more years before the company had sufficient growth to require the completion of the building. But within five years, the additional space was needed. So in 1912, the Universalist church buildings were demolished, and the second phase of Travelers was completed in 1913. Architecturally, the recently restored facade of travelers along Main Street looks much the same today. These two contrasting postcard views also show the growth of travelers in its first two phases. The initial phase is indicated on the left, and the completed second phase on the right. During that same period, the old Charter Oak Insurance Company building by this time home of Aetna Life Insurance, had also gone through a major transformation. The postcard on the right shows the building after four stories were added to it between 1912 and 1914. This work was overseen by Don Barber, the same architect who designed the Traveler's Building. This expansion and alteration which also removed much of the building's original ornamentation, is similar to changes made at the Connecticut Mutual Life Insurance Company building a decade earlier, as I describe in an earlier YouTube video. So by 1914, the view of this section of Main Street had achieved the look it would have for the next half century, but one more phase was needed, and, of course, that was the completion of the tower in 1919. Here is a section from the Hartford Atlas of 1917. It shows the area where the first phase of Travelers was built, as well as the second phase. It also shows the Howe House on Prospect Street that would be demolished to make way for the third phase, the extension that would be Travelers Tower. The fourth and final phase, which would complete filling in the rectangular area of the completed Traveler's Building, required another demolition on the southwest corner of Prospect and Grove Streets. On this corner had once stood a house owned by Governor Joseph Trumbull, which was demolished to make way in 1884 for the Connecticut Fire Insurance Building. This building was later acquired by travelers, and it was taken down in 1925. As the Hartford Current noted in 1927, this fourth and latest unit of the Traveler's Tower structure perfected the architectural scheme of the quadrangular base from which the sheer and vast white cliff of the tower rises. By the time that quadrangular base had been completed, Travelers had also erected an additional building north of Grove Street. In 1928, the company also built a skyscraper on Central Row. By the late 1920s, the company's growth had been noteworthy indeed. Yet another new building in the 1950s would result in the closure of this section of Grove Street, as I mentioned before. 
But returning to the original traveler's block, the final major act of transformation would be the clearing of the buildings just south of Travelers. This area consisted of the two Etna buildings on Main Street taken down in the early 1960s. There were also two mid-19th century houses on Prospect Street, which were taken down about a decade earlier. The old Perkins property at Grove and Athenaeum Square contained the Perkins House, as this 1917 map shows, it also had a stable, and it was a very historical stable indeed. It had belonged to the Wadsworth family, and it was here that George Washington had stabled his horse when he visited Jeremiah Wadsworth's nearby house to meet with the Comte de Rochambeau in 1780. The stable was substantially rebuilt in 1801 in a grand Palladian style. In the 1950s, the stable was saved from demolition by Catherine Seymour Day, the grand-niece of Harriet Beecher Stowe. It was moved to the Green in Lebanon, Connecticut, where it is owned by the DAR and can be visited today. A plaque marks the spot where the stable once stood in Hartford. This postcard shows an aerial view of Hartford with Traveler's Tower. We can zoom in to the Perkins property behind the two Etna buildings. It shows the Perkins house, demolished in 1954, and the Wadsworth stable, moved to Lebanon that same year. Last to go were the two Etna buildings. Etna Life Insurance moved to its gigantic home office on Farmington Avenue in 1931. Etna Fire Insurance then owned both of these buildings on Main Street until they were acquired by Travelers in 1957. Etna Fire Insurance, often referred to as Little Etna, would move to Elm Street and it is now part of Cigna. The two former Etna Insurance buildings on Main Street were demolished in the early 60s so that today there are no buildings between Travelers and the Wadsworth Athenaeum to the south. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. You can also learn more about the building of Travelers in my book, Vanished Downtown Hartford.